Hello there, my name is Ondi Bardoon and I'm here today to talk to you about the art of storytelling. So I am a reader and I'm a writer and I'm a published author. In fact, you may have come across one of my works already, which is called Why the Moon Travels. It's published by Sky and Price and it's a collection of folk tales. And that's one of the things that's very important in my life, folk and the stories of folk. Now, when we talk about folk, we're actually really talking about not just mythology and customs and old legends, but the everyday experiences and thoughts and ideas of your friends and your families and your neighbours and your grandparents and your uncles and may even your pets. And that's one of the things I think is very important to us that we may not realise that, that we are carrying all these stories within ourselves and you already are a storyteller. I'm also a traveller, which means I come from the travelling community on Minkeri or on Palvi. And part of our storytelling tradition is that we used to travel the country and take bits of stories here and there and blend them together in a big pot of ideas. And that's what actually one of the things I want to talk to you today and hopefully get your own ideas going because, again, not only are you a storyteller, you have a unique, special story that deserves to be shared with the world. Okay, so let's get started. Now, if you can, I want you to take a deep breath in and out. And I want you to think for a moment, if you can, what was the first story you ever remember being told? Now, we might realise it, but the world is always telling us stories and we're so filled with stories we don't even know. It. Because when we watch television, we get stories. When we hear the radio, we get stories. When we listen to friends and family, we get stories. Even by sitting in a place and looking around us, we can learn so much from that place that that in itself is a story. So I'd like you to think for a moment, without putting too much pressure on yourself, but think, what was the very first story I ever remember being told? Now, the second one is even more exciting, is that because you have all these stories, your own ideas and thoughts and dreams, is that what is the first story that you ever remember telling someone? Was it a day in the park? Was it eating your favourite food? Was it a dream? Was it a day in school? What was your very first story that you remember telling someone? And if you can't remember, well, today might be the day to pick what your very first story is going to be. Dreams as well is very important because each night we tell ourselves dreams and every night every dream is different. It shows us that not only are we a storyteller to the world around us, we're telling our stories and we're learning from ourselves in our own unique way. And now is an opportunity to tell a friend one of your stories. Now, there are also many, many different ways to tell a story. Some people tell stories orally by speaking them out. Other people write them down in notepads, like myself often. Other people draw them, other people paint them. Other people act them out in their bodies as a way to show them how they're really feeling. And that's really, really special and really important, but also utterly unique. And one of the things we can all do is finding out how we tell stories and how the world tells stories around, around us and how we can become a part of that voice and the ancient tradition of creating something within us that we understand and giving it as a gift to someone else. Now, getting stories is actually far easier than you think because, again, remember, the stories around us. But one of the easiest ways to get a story is just ask for it. Ask a friend, ask a parent, ask a neighbour, ask a shopkeeper. Ask people for their story, either a story of their life or a story of their youth or a story of their holidays or adventures or dreams and hopes or stories of sadness sometimes or stories of joy and stories of just for stories and for fun and frolics and freedom. And you may be surprised that people are far friendlier and open and sharing their stories than where we realise. Now, another way to get stories is to investigate. Now, this is quite interesting because sometimes we can't always ask people, but what we can do, we can look and we can observe. It's just say there's a chair and it's broken. What happened to that chair? Where did the chair come from? Who do you think sat in the chair? Who bought the chair? Was the chair painted? Was it bare wood? Is it soft with cushions? Which room is it in? All these tell you is something about that chair and where that chair came from. And that leads us on to the next tip, ideas around storytelling, is to imagine. It doesn't have to be real. It doesn't have to have happened to it not to mean something and be bringing a part of joy to your life. And that's one of the things that I would really encourage people to do, is to imagine. So this chair, this chair with a broken leg, maybe it got broken in a, site, in a, in a fight, you know, in a great battle. Maybe it was just old and creaky. Maybe someone sat on it and then tippled over and broke it. Who knows? But you know who, who can find out? You. Next, I would also I think is very important is that when we have t tales and ideas and stories, the really important thing is to pass them on. And the kindest way to share a story with people, the kindest way to, pr to protect it, is not just recording it or drawing it or painting it, but just sharing it with a friend. Because what you're doing is that you're sharing a part of your understanding and you're giving it out into the world. And if you can't share who you are and the beauty of all the things you understand, then we need to look at how the world is treating you and how you're treating yourself. Now, I would think about techniques around storytelling, and there's a really easy technique called the hand technique. 
and this one is actually used within our community is a way of telling a story to make sure it's complete so just if you can have a moment look at your hand see your thumb your thumb is known as the strength of your hand it's the strongest digit and what that usually represents that means that's the meaning of the story what ideas and thoughts do you want the story to push forward with? like what do you want people to kind of understand about it the next part of the part of the storytelling is the is the index finger now this is like pointing this is where do you want the story to go do you want to go to the past do you want to go to the future do you want to go around in circles that it just becomes fun you decide the next one is the middle finger now this is the most important one this is the one that happens in you suppose in the middle what do you want the story to be filled with not just about the beginning or the end but actually what happens in the, in the meantime is there an adventure is there a loss is there a gain is there fun is there a challenge is there a puzzle you decide now the next one is the ring finger and this is also symbolizes about what part of you is in that story do you have any of your ideas although you might have heard that story with someone else have you changed it have you allowed it to grow have you got that little story as a seed and watered it with your imagination it has grown and flourished into something new and that's what you decide and the last is the baby finger this represents how we end the story what do you want people to know to understand and to walk away from from that story now that can be very simple it can be a story of your day it can be a story that makes you smile it can be a story that it creeps at night and scares you and you are the one to decide but by following the hand technique we can get the strength the message the direction of what you want to where you want to start where you want to end what you want to fill it with how you know what you want to put into it yourself and your heart and your ambitions and also what you want people to walk away with and together these things can become a beautiful story now we would also remember there's no such thing as a failure there are no failures in telling stories because stories are important and they're meaningful and even if people don't understand what those stories are about or understand what you're trying to tell them you can learn from that that doesn't mean you fail in telling a story that just means that you've learned something new that you've learned how people might understand stuff how they may think about it but also how you can get better at it next time you said you do it and as long as you tell your stories fill it with your heart with your ideas and share and grow and get stories from other people from friends and families and even to take a chance tell a friend this evening a dream um, maybe ask your, your parents or your grandparents about their lives maybe your teacher maybe if you would the adventure of a pet or even if you take a chance to stand up and become tell a story of a tree and then become the tree like your arms the branches your fingers the twigs and you can feel the wind move between you because at the end of the day stories are messages that we have within us that we share to the people and as a storyteller you are incredibly powerful in gathering and gaining and holding together and expressing them out into the world because at the end of the day no matter what happens you are the story and that story is beautiful and you have the ability to share from whatever way you want to share it so remember ask investigate be imaginative be adventurous create your own rules give it strength give it direction fill it with the beautiful things you know within yourselves fill it with you and always understand what you want to leave people behind and what you want to send them out into the world because at the end of the day remember there is a story but you you're the storyteller now if you have a chance and have the opportunity i would really suggest you check out children books ireland ie we can find loads of resources like this as well as the mind yourself uh, information resource pack thank you very much for, for sharing your time with me I've really enjoyed it and also long may your own journeys, adventures and dreams and stories continue. Slangwaga. Mm -hmm.